Bonjour, bonjour. It is Monday morning, except it isn't. It's actually Sunday evening. Um, and uh, you see, I'm going out tonight. So uh, I, as I was getting dickied up anyway, I thought, sure, I'll do me chat to you uh, while I have the old makeup on. And then I can go over to Dad in the morning with no makeup on, you see, and will save me the trouble. Now, uh, so, I mean, obviously, uh, we're going to be talking about Strictly because uh, cause it was fabulous. Oh God, the relief, lads. Now, I will tell you many things. Um, Susan Kalman gave me, you know that funny feeling when the hairs on the back of your neck lift? I got that from her because, because of the sincerity of, of, her, of her dancing. Um, the Reverend made me smile. He put a smile on my face, like literally, you know, when, when, when people say that, he put a smile on my face. He actually did, I found I was smiling against my volition, would that be the word? Who else? I liked Chizzy and Pasha, and not just because I love Pasha. Um, I thought she was great fun, and not just because I love Pasha. And can I also say, and I say this a lot, my feelings for Pasha are very complicated. They are not exactly sexual. They are more maternal, and also, I just, I just love his accent and his little Pasha face and his cute personality. And I am not again Rachel Riley at all. I am really happy that they are happy. Now, uh, I have, uh, all three agains are on McGee. Um, I, uh, and I know some of you out there won't agree with me, but look at, I'm entitled to my opinion. Um, uh, I got scolded there on Twitter. Uh, I am also again AJ, but not enough to actually put an again on him because my againness of McGee is so, I, I don't even know the word. Um, all in all, it was just lovely. But now look at lads, we are moving into a time of great uncertainty and great change because I am going to be away really um, from now until the end of NOV. And I do apologise for that, but um, that's just the way it is. Now, next weekend, I, I won't be able to watch the Strictly when it's on because, you know, I have a lovely mother-in-law. I have a, a lovely mother-in-law and I really do love her and I'm really, really fond of her. But for some reason, I have agreed to go to a Mahler yoke. I'll just say, is it Mahler? It's Mahler. I know nothing about any of this, but we're going to a Mahler yoke, the three of us. And the funny thing is, she loves Strictly too. <clears throat> and I will say that she is again, AJ, just putting it out there. Um, a woman of great taste, always said it. Um, and so, so, and then I think a week later or two weeks later, I would be up in the air. I will be, actually I mightn't be. Look, at, I do my best. You know, we have the wonders of technology and everything, but it's weird because I am packing for all kinds of stuff. I'm packing for my Australian stuff, which will be for the warm weather, Then, because I'm going to England on, on Wednesday, this Wednesday. No, I am not jetting off because we got so miserable with all the jettings being delayed that we are going on the ferry. So I am, sailing instead to England and uh, so it's all busy but I will keep you apprised but the Monday things might go for a while and I apologize he says we'll do something um, the only other thing is that I might be a bit mental worse or mental from from the jet lag also I do not have stamina in fact that's a crappy way of saying it Granny Claire who was my mother's mother we called her Granny Claire because she lived in Clare, because we were a literal sort of a family. Um, she, her phrase was, um, I don't have the howling out. She went off on some yoke one day with a load of women's and in the middle of it, she had to stop and say, women, I'm afraid I'm going to have to leave ye. I don't have the howling out. And I have inherited the lack of howling out. I have no ability for howling out either. But look, we'll do our best. And I'm sorry now if I have frightened you with all this talk that might be unnecessary. I don't know whether it's better to, to be honest with you and, and so it won't come as a shock or whether to protect you from the grisly truth and then only unleash it should it be necessary. 
I'm only messing about all of that. We'll do our best. Now I have a book to show you. It is called Anatomy of a Scandal. It is by a fabulous writer called Sarah Vaughan. I believe this is her first novel. It is about, well, it's about two women's, um, but, mm, and it's a courtroom procedural about a rape case, but it's about everything. It's about class. It's about how all those types who go to Eton just have that massive sense of entitlement and think that they can run the country. That just it's their due. Um, and it's about, it's about that. It's about, it's about inequality. It's about the inequality between men and women. Um, and it's about the, the inequality between the so-called upper classes in Britain and, and the rest of the country. Um, it's savage in its um, analysis of Britain. But it's a really, it's a very, entered. it's a very, I cared about both of the women in this, you know. So it's both political and human and I couldn't put it down. Now it's not out yet and I'm not sure when it will be because I had to get this off Lizzie Smith um, and doesn't say here, but it might be early next year. Um, it's really, really, really good. And I realised something, that like almost every book I recommend to you is by a woman. And that's not a deliberate thing on my part. But I find that like, I don't have to search to hear male voices. Like if I turn on the radio, they're there. Like if I turn on the telly, they're there. If I open a newspaper, they're writing. Um, and I suppose I must be making some sort of an effort to try and and try and balance things because I'm very interested in what women think and in what they think now, um, which is why I am always excited about new books. I don't, I don't read the classics. Mock me if you must, but um, I just don't. I want to know what women are thinking, and the, uh, one of the great ways of doing that is is by reading um, current novels. So. That is all my news. I am so ha Oh, right, well, yeah. I mean, obviously I'm so happy Strictly is back. Zoe is back this afternoon at half six, because we're pretending it's Monday, right? And I will be on on Friday, and I will have to find a nice way of saying that all three of my agains are on one person. I will find a nice way. I will, I am good at that. I will say that I love them all, but I don't love them all equally. I could say that. I'll, I'll, I'll come up with good things. But I, I, you know, I love most of them. I was very pleased with Molly, now what's her surname? King. Because I thought she'd be great. Um, and so I was again her. Not again her in, a, in like the way I am with McGee. But I was like, oh yeah, you're going to be great and stop telling me you won't be. And then she wasn't. And now I like her. You know, that's canny. Even if you are good, pretend you're not. You see, him and me and him have fallen out a little bit about Marigold because he loves Marigold. He loved him on um, Got to Dance, didn't you, sweetie? He did. He loved him. Um, and I loved him too. But he was so good last night, I thought, ah, here. No one else has a chance with him being so good. Although I am happy for Jeanette. I love Jeanette. You know, I love them all. So happy about Odie and Johnny Paycock. This is, they, they, that they'll go, do very well. And um, no, I'm going to stop now because I could talk all day about it. Have a good week. Zoe is back. I mean, it's all so wonderful. You know, we're going to have Strictly seven nights a week for three months nearly. I mean, it's feckin' fantastic. I said I'd keep this short. I think I probably haven't. I'm awfully sorry. You are lovely to me. Oh, my book is still number one. Thank you so much. You are really kind. And number four in Britain with Le Car Carre and Wilbur Smith and them. There's a word. Behemoths. And there I am, number four, the highest woman. Thank you. You are so nice to me.